Thanks so much and welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning or afternoon, wherever you're coming from. Um, we're super excited to be here today to talk about the Racial Equity Data Hub, Tableau's Racial Justice Data Initiative, and share about some of the ways in which this work is developing. Um, and really just happy to be here at Black and Data Week. It's my first time at Black and Data Week, so I'm um, super excited to connect with you all. I believe both my and Alan con Alan's contacts are going to be pasted in the chat. So after this conversation, feel free to get in touch with us with any questions, and then feel free to ask questions throughout as well, too. So we already got pretty good intros, so I'll keep this brief again. My name is Channing Nesbitt, and I'm the Social Impact Program Manager with Tableau and now Salesforce as well. Um, Tableau Foundation sits under Tableau Software, sits within the organization. We are the social impact arm, the philanthropic arm, but also the impact investment arm as well. And we also sit under the entire GP&E office at Salesforce. Um, I think you heard a little bit about my background already, so I'll go ahead and pass to Alan um, so he can introduce himself as well. Hello, sorry. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Alan. Excited to be here. I was a part. I was a, in the audience last year for Black and Data, so I'm excited to be the speaker this year. Um, we had awesome introductions here, but I am a to Tableau social ambassador. So the ambassador program is a recognition program where one can either apply or get nominated, and you serve a year, um, engaging Tableau and then engaging the community. Sorry about that. Engaging the community on ways, to, you know, to amplify data, amplify other voices. Um, so this is my second year as an ambassador. In addition, I'm a board advisory member for the Racial Equity Data Hub, as well as part of their Community Equity Task Force, where we look to make uh, the data community more equitable, more inclusive. So definitely look out for some data and diversity events next year from Tableau, as well as anyone who's doing data viz and they use Tableau, uh, there is a community equity task force gallery that we create different um, data visualizations that center around equity, diversity, and inclusiveness. Back to you, Channing. Awesome. Thanks, Alan. So we're going to jump right into the meat of this presentation. We're going to talk about Tableau's racial justice data initiative first and kind of give context to how we at the Tableau Foundation work as well. I also want to call out that throughout this presentation, especially as we get into the middle of it, you'll um, we'll be pasting links to everything we're referencing throughout the chat or into the chat so you can I, you guys can choose to follow along or explore some of these resources and links afterwards as well, too. But to start us off, the state of racial equity and the promise of data. So, you know, last summer, 2020, June, we all um, probably were reflecting and feeling a lot of anger, frustration, um, and not really knowing exactly how to move forward. And we've, in our community, have felt this time and time again. So this is nothing new. I think the different point, um, the different kind of cause this brought in my life at the time was now I was working for a tech company uh, at Tableau and it caused myself to reflect on what that meant and this, the role of social impact, what that meant from a company standpoint. I, I'm hoping that it caused everyone in, in my organization to reflect on how they could um, advocate for change in their own lives. The one thing I was proud of is that it definitely changed the scope in which that Tableau Foundation focused on um, the way in which we went about our equity investments. And so if we're thinking back, until 2014 when the Tableau Foundation was uh, when, when the Tableau Foundation started, there have been equity investments made in different areas such as homelessness, education access, and um, food insecurity, amongst other things, global health as well, just to name a few. One thing rem like rang true throughout every kind of investment in equity that we had made up until that point, and that was that the investments and the projects we took on were geared towards the symptoms of these issues and issues that pertain to such things as systemic racism as well. And so when we fast forward to 2020, in light of everything that took place, we were we immediately knew that something had to change in the way that we targeted our work if we wanted to see real impact with uh, through the use of data, essentially. So here's a quote, Ali. This is from the co-lead of the Racial Justice Data Initiative with me. He's also the founder and a global head of social impact at Tableau named Neil Myrick. And the way that I just sum up this quote is really in which it kind of relates to how we at the foundation and Neil and I flipped in the ways in which we thought about investing in equity uh, and equity initiatives at this point. We really wanted to, instead of focusing on the symptoms of systemic racism with the racial justice data initiative, we decided we needed to target the root causes of, sustain, of, of systemic racism in this case, if we wanted to have an impact. And so this is what really led us to the focus of our racial justice data initiative as it stands today. 
when we went live with the racial justice data initiative, we wanted to form something that would focus on combating systemic racism and prioritizing um, protecting and empowering the black community for the initial cycle of this of this initiative as well. And so with that focus and with that idealization of wanting to target the root causes, we realized that we this would help guide the projects we made, the partnerships we were able to take on, and really allowed us to build great um, trust, essentially, with the leaders that we, we, we got behind to really lead this work um, to move our country forward through their own use of data as well. And so one thing we had to keep in mind while we were doing this and while we were forming the structure of this initiative was, you know, we're coming at this in this effort as Tableau software or as Salesforce now. These are technology companies and that comes with a whole convolution of, you know, potential thoughts from partners we wanted to work with or organizations that may not trust the tech industry completely as well. And so we had to emphasize the fact that we are not the experts in these issues that we're trying to combat across the board of systemic racism. We know we can't assume what is best for communities or what is most important for communities to progress forward. But what we can do is we can be as thorough as possible um, and learn as much as possible in order to get behind the right partners and the right leaders that can propel this work forward and extend the reach of this work into the communities um, of the people who need the support the most. And so that is kind of where we got when we launched the initiative in July of last year. And so let's just dive right into some of the inner workings of the initiative as well. So I'm going to briefly go over these um, these three kind of buckets I've put the breakdown of the racial justice data initiative within. I'll start with the investment. So when we initially launched the racial justice data initiative, this was Tableau Foundation's biggest investment and largest initiative and portfolio essentially to date. Um, I should have said this previously, but my team, um, we're a relatively small team, but we work across six pretty big portfolios of focus, mine being racial justice and equity, as well as the data, hub, which we'll get to. But we have the homelessness portfolio, a gender equity portfolio, a global health combating infectious disease, and I believe the, a hunger portfolio as well. And so this immediately became the largest portfolio that we were able to take on. And initially, this investment came as a $10 million investment broken down by funding, software, and um, training and all kinds of support embedded within. And that is the way in which the foundation at large will usually kind of structure their grant making process or the impact investments that we make. It's always a mixture of software and funding. We tend to not be the largest of funders compared to like, you know, the folks at Salesforce and other big um, foundations as well. So we really try to leverage the superpower of the data, the data analytics, and the visualization tools in everything that we make. So with all the partnerships that we've made in the racial justice data initiative and extending out to the foundation as well, we take that multi-layered approach. And then finally, um, I wanna call out the initial three-year cycle bullet point, essentially. Each, all the grants that we make are multi-year and unrestricted. So we bucket them in these cycles is, what, is how we kind of call them. And they always run for at least three years. So that's not to say that this racial justice state initiative will only last three years, because it definitely will not. We'll continue to prioritize this work um, on an ongoing basis. But each, like the, the license terms, the funding cycles, everything will go on a multi-year basis um, and last three years before we revamp and then look to renew or to take on different partnerships as well. And throughout that entire time, we're also um, continuing to grant and continuing to take on new projects. So. That's the basics of the breakdown. The final call out that I'll make is what we learned throughout the throughout this year, especially actually, is especially in the place of racial justice and equity work, especially if you're wanting to work with organizations at the community level, you have to think about the historical injustices that have taken place that have kept these organizations and these leaders um, under-resourced, underfunded, um, without the capacity they need to take on this large software and plenty of other data visualization or data platforms as well. So a lot of this portfolio is going to be cash heavy for this, especially the entirety of this initial three year period. So we can build the capacity of these organizations that we hope to work with to make sure that once we get them Tableau and once we embed it within their organization, that they can use it effectively. Um, so with that thought process, we actually bumped up the investment to $18 million total. Um, and I actually assume that that might actually continue to increase um, just because of the importance that we're putting behind this initiative. Um, but for now, again, it still stands as the entire um, $18 million investment from Tableau in this initiative for the first three years. For the areas of focus and plans for expansion, I'll keep this high level as well too. The areas of focus 
those four kind of um, bullet points you see on the slide, these are really the pillars in which we kind of bucket this work. And these will completely transfer over to the racial equity data hub as well when I get there. But we work to partner with organizations that are combating systemic racism in the space of achieving education equity or achieving equitable access to all forms of education. Um, we want to build economic opportunity, build economic power, especially in the black community. We want to work to um, advance equitable justice reform, especially in the criminal justice space. And then we want to build black political power and equitable political representation across the board as well. So this comes in the form of civic engagement. This comes in the form of voting rights, vote, combating voter suppression, and kind of everything that runs true through that, through that uh, area of focus as well. And then finally, I'll finish off talking about some of our plans um, to expand the initiative itself. We've learned a lot this year. We've gotten, we've gotten off to a really good start with a lot of the projects and partnerships that we've made um, in these different core areas of focus that we've established as well. So I think in terms of the fiscal, our fiscal year starts in February, so it's kind of counterintuitive that 2022 is our fiscal 2023 20, year, so don't mind that. But um, going into next year, I think having established some of the, the the ways in which we've learned from organizations, we really want to double down on a lot of the projects that we've begun to start and continue to fund some of these initial partnerships that we've made that we'll get into later on in this presentation as well. We want to extend these organizations work and kind of go deeper before we extend the breadth, I would say, um, to take on more than we can chew um, going into next year. So that's definitely a focus of ours. I would say another focus of ours is to really dive into the economic opportunity space because that is something we've continually heard is a priority and needs to be a priority in our in, in the black community um, for a long standing time not just next year and beyond and then finally we're going to continue to learn from organizations we're partnering with we're going to continue to research and equip ourselves as a as an organization as a foundation with the proper education that we need to partner with the right folks and to take on projects that are actually going to achieve success essentially so with this, I'll keep this brief. And this is a chart that we're using to explain kind of the focus of the foundation at large. It's kind of um, misrepresent, misrepresenting a little bit of the information. It should be more of a circle rather than a straight across line because you can you should be able to go back and forth seamlessly. The portion of this that I want to focus on is the data sharing and data equity. I think from the Tableau Foundation's onslaught outside of the racial justice work as well, there was a real focus on building data-driven programs up until around 2019. And then this idea of using data to dismantle injustices, in this case, to dismantle the aspects of systemic racism, we realized that data and robust data needs to be shared, needs to be democratized to have that transformative role. And so data democratization became this huge kind of through the racial justice data initiative, it became this huge talking point for us and it drove our work um, that influenced how we structured the initiative, but also then influenced how we take on uh, other areas of focus across those foundation portfolios as well. So what evolved from focusing on building organizations capacity to work with data driven programs and data informed strategies, it trended more towards data sharing and incorporating communities in that process incorporating different levels of expertise in that process to make sure that the data that we're sharing is clean, is usable, is accessible, is de-weaponized at the end of the day. And ultimately, the goal of that is trending towards what we're calling data equity, where it has that direct community benefit, where it's involving stakeholders from multiple sectors, and where um, you're really empowering people of all levels of data expertise to be equipped to make decisions from the analysis that we're trying to present or that an organization may be trying to present as well. And so that um, is really, oh, before I get to the data hub, sorry. This is another uh, slide that really gears on the aspect of us not being the experts in this case. Like I said, we are lucky enough to be working with plenty of like really well-established partners in, in, the, in, the, in the thought leadership space, in the organizational impact space, from Policy Link to Urban Institute, Feeding America, USA Facts, a couple others, Measures for Justice, and now Civic Influencers. These are all foundation grantees across those areas of focus that I mentioned before that kind of sit in those buckets that we've established in our racial justice data initiative that help guide each specific area of work that we're trying to do. Um, and what we want to do through the data hub, but also through just the general Tableau Foundation work is spotlight them and have them champion or have us champion their, their voice 
um, to bring credibility and to show that you know we can that they can also empower community organizations below them with the data that they need to make the right decisions and to actually bring impact in their into their communities as well. So going back to this idea of democratization of data, this is what actually led us to decide that we were going to launch this data hub that we've gone live with at this point now. So the racial equity data hub and the idea of democratization of data really is the through line that ties together each aspect or each core area of focus in the racial justice data initiative. We wanna be able to, to democratize data or to make this data more accessible on a wide scale and to us, and if you were to go back to that chart that I shared a, a minute ago, this idea of data sharing that leads to data equity or this idea of data democratization that leads to data equity is much more than just the aspect of sharing additional data sources or just sharing visualizations or just, you know, making, putting things onto a data hub and having people click into different websites and download data sets. The layered approach is what is why we decided to go live with this and what goes into that layered of approach is the cleaning of the data, the vetting of the data, the de-weaponizing of the data to make sure that it doesn't lead to the misrepresentation of communities and individuals, which will actually bring harm to those folks. It's the humanization aspect of the data. And it's also using data in a way that will lead to analysis that is inclusive and responsible at the end of the day. And so for our data hub team, it's the storytelling, it's the context piece, it's the guiding and narrative that we add to these data stories and examples to help bring people's ideas of how they can use data along and so they can understand the issues we're trying to break down in more depth, regardless of what where they're coming into um, this conversation in terms of their backhand knowledge as well too. So again, this data hub, which is a platform that we've built in a collaborative way and will continue to be built in a, in a collaborative way, really combines our company mission of wanting to help people see and understand their data with the expertise of researchers and advocates and analysts that are wanting to use data in this effort to you know combat systemic racism across the board um, through this use of through this powerful tool so so we launched this data hub in february of this past year and like I said before, this, this, this platform is something that has been collaboratively built with, uh, with organizations that we've partnered with, with advocates that we've connected with, and then what you'd see on the data hub as it currently stands. And I think we'll, we'll, we'll probably share a link to this in the chat, but you have access to relevant data analysis and plenty of resources that can help advance organizations work to combat these issues or to, 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 to advocate for racial equity across different areas of focus. So specifically we want these advocates and these in these nonprofit organizations and these government agencies, wherever, to learn from each other and to understand the different ways that data is being transformative across the board as well. You know, and I mentioned before, and I'll, I'll go through these four kind of buckets that I've put on this slide, the details of the hub, the, des the design of the hub as it currently stands is gonna continue to evolve. Right now, it's at this place where you're able to easily access dashboard examples, easily access the different um, complementary blog posts and resources that are tied to those dashboard examples. And Alan will go through a few of those in a second. Um, but we're gonna even continue to make it so these resources that are shared on the hub are extremely clear and easy for folks to access. And whether that's training, enablement tools, um, conversational resources, guidelines, toolkits, whatever they may be, we're all in, they're all currently being developed now. Um, I would say at the top of the year, you'll see a complete makeover of how the design of the data hub currently stands, just so it's even more intuitive um, for folks to come in and, and gain benefit from. And then the last thing I'll call out on the, the details of the hub exactly is that it still focuses on those four kind of areas that we established throughout the racial justice data initiative. Um, it's just a little more broad where it's not as focused solely on the black community. It's more encompassing of any kind of racial justice story. Um, that folks at organizations bring to us or that we deem as important, essentially. Um, I want to call out a couple, I'll, I'll keep this short because I know we want to, I want to save time for Alan to go in these details with us, but I want to call out a couple of the ways we're building this platform with our community and then some of these key highlights and then hitting on some of the, the components of our next phase. The one call out on the building with our own community tab is Policy Links Racial Equity Data Lab. So on the data hub, there's a section for a couple of different partners that we spotlight. And one of those is Policy Link's Racial Equity Data Lab. So PolicyLink is, is an organization that is an anchor partner of ours. 
on the foundation. They're, they're a thought partner of ours with the Data Hub, and they actually have their own data lab that will present a number of different Tableau-ready data sets. And actually, towards the end of the year, you'll see an increasing amount. But the cool thing about this data lab is it really tries to make the initial point of entry for folks using Tableau a lot more easy. Um, with starter workbooks and step-by-step -step guidelines for how those workbooks have been created so that if an organization comes and they have an indicator that they want to um, track towards they're able to take these starter workbooks or these step-by-step -step guidelines and pretty much emulate the same process over into their own dashboard to kick off their own analysis as well um, so this is something that we are actually going to be taking a page out of policy links book from and add more details around that to the data hub as well um, going into next year. And that really comes in the form of different enablement assets um, and this thing called the Data Advocacy Explorer, which will be launched probably early first quarter of next year, where it'll take organizations a step by step through for how to not only create a dashboard, but collect their data, um, clean it, restructure it, de-weaponize it, democratize it essentially, and then also lead it to the point where they're able to make the dashboard and then communicate their advocacy points through it um, in whatever fashion they see fit as well too. A couple highlights that I'll call out. I'll call out the Do No Harm Guide a bit later, but I want to call out the Prison Gerrymandering and Feeding America dashboard um, as well, which you'd be able to find on the hub. These are two dashboards that are really successful and great examples of really complex issues that are able to be built in Tableau and have this narrative added to them. So no matter if you knew what prison gerrymandering was before you seen the dashboard, or no matter if you understand the indications of food insecurity as it pertains to race that Feeding America was able to present, you'd be able to go through these two dashboards and completely have an entire story told to you through how they're analyzing this data and visualizing it as well too. Um, we don't, I'll, we're not gonna go over those examples in detail, but if you're exploring the hub, I recommend checking those ones out. And then finally, our ACS data engineering project. This is something that we'll also be launching towards the end of this year, top of next year, but this is probably gonna be the most impactful um, enablement asset that is going to be added to the hub because it is taking a bunch of different prominent data sets starting with ACS and census data and completely making the entry point accessible for anybody across different platforms whether you're in AWS whether you're in Snowflake whether you're in forgetting the other one but um, or if you're just using just Tableau as, as well um, and entering from Tableau as well you will have access to millions and millions and millions of data points I want to say it'll be up to now it's currently 10 years of census data, but it will we'll add on the, the, the latest data in January as well. Um, you'll have this entry point to your analysis made so easy. And it's almost, it's trying to take the first 50% of the journey out of the hands of folks who are at these organizations and having everybody have a head start on where they can begin their analysis. So again, kind of taking that page out of Policy Link's book, um, but really focusing on just making not only the census data more accessible, but a bunch of other prominent data sets more accessible as well, too. I'm taking up a lot of time, so I'm going to end this um, by just focusing on like the next phase of the Data Hub. We are building out what we want to call our advocacy projects. And this is just, again, kind of taking organizations step by step through all they need to know from start to finish, how they can make an advocacy campaign while using Tableau, while using some of this data. Um, to inform their arguments and finally just calling out community enablement as something we always want to continue to push forward we want to make everything easy for our partners and also their stakeholder organizations that work beneath their umbrella and so that is something we're going to continue to learn through listening tours through research and through um, adaptations to the data hub that you'll see coming forward in the next year as well too i think i should be getting close finally um, the do no harm guide which is probably our largest uh, milestone of this year. This guidebook, which is the um, one of the first things you'll see on the Data Hub, is something that we're extending out to the entire data community, but it's really just an extensive toolkit for folks who are using data in any capacity to do so in a way that is both, or is all, is inclusive, diverse, and equitable in a sense. And what the Urban Institute does in this case, who was our partner with this guide, is they break down about 10 principles of how folks who are using data visualization tools need to uh, what folks need to be aware of when they are visualizing data that is broken down by race and ethnicity, how you collect that data, how you how you incorporate community involvement in that collection process. How do you involve folks, the right folks, in the process of putting together your analysis, both in a visual format, but then also in a qualitative format after as well, too. And then they have other call outs to principles like how you shape and size um, your data points, how you use color, how you 
uh, present your narrative in your in your data in your dashboard as well too. So it's a it's a it's a relatively basic level of information, but it's something that everyone in the data ecosystem needs to have an understanding of. And so we are going to continue to push this guide out to everybody who is um, both in, inside and outside of Tableau and in this larger data community. And this guide will continue to evolve and take on more topics um, going into next year as well too. So I'm really excited for that. I've talked a lot and I think I'm going to get ready to pass it to Alan. Um, we'll be answering any questions after as well too. So I know I had to rush through some of that. So feel free to get in touch with me if you have any questions as well, but I'm going to pass it to you now, Alan. So this is the this is the fun part. I get to talk about the data stories. So um, these are a few examples which are products which has come from this effort that Tableau has done. Um, as someone who's been on the board, um, advisory board, I'm very excited because they did reach out to many people, including people like myself who have experience in data visualization and storytelling. So I just want to run through some examples of how. <clears throat> we've seen data's role in equity work across different communities. Next slide. So one of the main things that I want us all to walk away from is walk away with rather is data can play a transformative role in the fight for equity and justice. I think with all the data that we have out there, it's great that this particular field or can now have data to leverage a lot of their stories. So data is not required to prove that racism exists. We, we, Let's just make that clear. But at the same time, data can show how racism manifests. It can also, and with the data capabilities, we're able to disaggregate data to ensure that resources reach everyone who needs them. So as we begin to slice and dice biracial and, and ethnic groups, as well as um, geography or age, we can begin to have more strategic, more strategy around how we address certain um, gaps that we have in society. Echoing some of what Ch Channing said earlier and just from with meetings from the foundation, when we think about data democratization, we should think it beyond just presenting additional resources or hashtag data for all. Uh, we should also have that extra step where we're providing a clean and actionable data set that is de-weaponized, that's vetted for misrepresentation, and making sure that it's prepared for responsible and inclusive analysis. So when we have, when we start looking at best practices, we have our ideas, we have charts, we have visualizations and presentations, we should always remember that there are people behind that data and that everything that we do should be human centered. Next slide. So this is our first example, and this is PolicyLink that I mentioned earlier in the presentation. So PolicyLink is a national research and action institute. They're dedicated to advancing uh, economic and social equity. Their focuses are on low-income communities as well as communities of color. So in this story here, we are looking at the actual um, policy link dashboard. Let me share that with you real quick. Um, so we have this and as you look at the dashboard, you'll see some prominent numbers there. So um, PolicyLink was able to shed light, they were able to quantify that rent debt and eviction risk crisis in America was worth $15 billion. And within that, there was a disproportionate um, amount of people of color who were impacted. So out of the 5.8 million households that are behind on rent, 64% represent households of color. Just a quick, um, look at the data sources. So in addition to using um, the US Census Bureau's Household Pulse Survey, um, as well as USC Center for Economic and Social Research, they're also using what they've created, a national equity atlas. And that atlas was launched, with, and it's actually viewed as one of the most powerful resources for data on racial equities in, in, um, across the whole country. So when we think about a lot of approaches, we have a lot of um, demographic data, but sources like the um, National Equity Access kind of puts that extra layer of what I call the lived experience. It goes a little deeper into the communities and starts to amplify nuances around the issues. So next slide. 
So as we look at the dashboard, you'll see that there was a debt dashboard, which we're looking at, but there's also a debt map. If you click on that, you have the capabilities of drilling down on state and county levels. And this example here is showing how we've drilled down in California. So California has, um, it's showing that in California, we have low income renters and renters of color are being dis disproport disproportionately represented. And if we look here at the map, you'll see that uh, California has about 2.6 billion um, total rent, rent debt. And the people of color percentage is 77%, which is higher than the national percentage, which was 64. And so with this information, Policy Links Dashboard was able to help make an informed policy solution. So being able to quantify the amount of debt, being able to drill down to California and even potentially any potential state, I mean, sorry, county levels where we can kind of make sure that they're targeted in terms of this package. Um, so they were able in, back in June to enact a 5.1 billion rent debt forgiveness package, which covers 100% of rent debt for low income residents during the COVID lockdowns. So this is another, again, another example where you have an issue, you're able to quantify it, you're also able to use data to strategize how you're about, about going about solving it. So our next slide, please. So the next example is looking at vaccine equity in the state of Georgia. So we have two organizations here who teamed up the Southern Economic Advancement Project and Fair Count. So at SEEP, uh, they partner with policy thinkers and their whole goal is to provide equity to all Southerners. And Fair Count, they work to build long-term power in communities that um, have been historically miscounted via the census as well as the polls. And so together they teamed up to create a vaccine dashboard. And this dashboard allows you, let me share it real quick. Um, it begins to look at vulnerable communities across the state of Georgia. Um, in addition, um, it's showing you all existing vaccination sites on one searchable map. And what I like about it, in addition, is that it's showing the characteristics and challenges that communities may face in actually reaching a vaccination site. Like they may lack um, being able to drive there, maybe too far. Um, maybe there is some construction or something, some sort of barrier, be it economic or um, any other, or physical. So this um, dashboard was able to allow for account to facilitate about over 7,000 vaccination appointments. And in addition to that, also any hesitancies that people may have had in wanting to get the vaccine, it helped create a strategy about how to address the communities, which communities to go after first in terms of being the most vulnerable, and another great example that came from this, which is one of the things that we, at the foundation, when someone comes to the table with a dashboard that may be focusing on one state, you know, you can have other states, other countries model what is here. And so one example of that is that the state of Louisiana was able to use this dashboard and take from it, they didn't replicate one, but they took the characteristics that I was talking about as far as the challenges and facing actual, you know, reaching vaccination sites and applied it to their state. So with that, they were able to use some of those characteristics and, and able to address their communities. So maybe they found ways to quantify which was their most vulnerable uh, communities and just have a strategy plan for that. Uh, next slide. So our last example here is, um, this is a individual, Omar Abbasi, Tableau consultant. He teamed up with the Baltimore Neighborhood Indicators Alliance to visualize Baltimore's hypersegregation. Now this was done, this is based off of the work of Dr. Lawrence T. Brown, uh, the white L versus the black butterfly. And so with that, Dr. Brown has laid out that redlining and the legacy of it has created a interesting pattern in Baltimore where you have an L shaped, which represents white neighborhoods. So on either side of that L, you see black neighborhoods. And based on the six points here, or five, yes, sorry, five points, um, commuting time, child poverty, internet access, investment in small businesses and unemployment, 
you can see the disparities between the white neighborhoods and the black neighborhoods. So let me just share this real quick with everyone. Um, so with this dashboard, you're able to visualize something that a lot of people have known for decades about redlining and the impact of it. And Dr. Brown has able has been able to, again, quantify the pillars when you're looking at these different cities, because this is not only in Baltimore. It may not be the same severity, but the, there are many countries, really, many cities across the country that have been affected by redlining. So when you start building a framework, these are the characteristics that you can look at for each city. When you look at commuting times to work or child poverty, educational access, internet access, things of these natures, and you can start visualizing it. And you know, people have talked about this for decades as well, but now as you visualize it, I find that it's more impactful and more impactful. And also I just want to point out too when working with the community on these particular issues, because there are many people who are definitely passionate about a lot of areas of social justice that they do, like the foundation does recommend using the do no harm guide. Um, and they make sure that when you are presenting a story that you, you know, you have solid data, your narrative is not indirectly or in, unintentionally offending any party, um, and that you're just creating a well-balanced story. And I believe that's my last slide. Next slide. Yes, so just um, I'll take give it back to Chan to let, it, let you all know how to get involved. Yeah, awesome. Thanks so much, Alan. Um, and those are really cool examples. And definitely three examples that um, I think we bolster up as success stories, especially the policy, the policy link example, which had direct impact um, immediately um, as well. But all three great examples. And Alan um, has been just a huge advocate and um, a champion for us. And we've just relied on a lot of his expertise in terms of making sure that these data stories are presented in the right way. So big thanks to him. Um, to get involved, I know we're at time pretty much, so I just want to be quick with this, but uh, to get involved, I would say you have both my and Alan's contact, and I would love to uh, have a conversation with anyone and everyone who is interested in like how data can be used to, um, to push some of these conversations forward, to advocate for some of these issues. At, on the Data Hub side, we're always taking on project ideas. If you have an idea for data that uh, needs to be made more accessible or needs to be used more in this conversation, then we're always welcoming folks with that level of expertise or insight um, to ki kind of help guide us. Like I said, this is a this is an evolving platform that will continue to change, especially going into next year after after we get through um, some of the rebuilding and, and, and strategy conversations. Um, but we want to be even more thorough. We want to even be more layered. We want to take on some of these in more depth. So as that thought process for us changes, we always want to listen to folks who are also as passionate and interested in some of this work as we are. And then finally, I think Alan already posted a uh, link to this, but on the Data Hub side, definitely sign up for our newsletter. It's about a, it's a relatively periodic newsletter that comes out sometimes on a monthly basis, sometimes on a bi-monthly basis as well depending on the level of new material we have, depending on the updates we have to share on partners and dashboards and the impact that they have um, in some of this work. But it's a great way to stay up to date on the developments. It's a great way to stay in the know of um, some of the conversations we're having, some of the, pro the, the topics we're thinking of and some of the projects that we are signed on to complete. And then it's a great way to look back at how some of these dashboards are also affecting real life policy solutions or um, having the change that, or beginning to start the change that we want to see at the end of the day. Um, and the last thing I'll say is just, you know, this is early on in the phase of both the initiative and the data hub. And like I said before, this is work that is going to take time and we are completely invested in to see all the way through from our standpoint, coming at it from a tech company, of course. Um, but it's something that takes time and it's something that as people become more equipped to use data, as transparency is brought through data, as accountability is stood up through data, that we want to make sure that we push the right principles forward with. So it will it will be a, it'll be an investment that we continue to bolster um, on an ongoing basis. So with that, um, Alan and I go to our last slide. I think it's just a thank you. Alan and I just want to say thank you for your time today. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. We hope you're learning a bunch and enjoying Black and Data Week. It's been a pleasure to be a part of this and a pleasure to share some of this work with you all. Um, and yeah, definitely reach out with any questions or connect with us on LinkedIn. And there'll be plenty, plenty, plenty of more stuff that we'll be going live with uh, towards the end of the year and at the top of the year too. 
Um, how can um, those who um, have their own organizations and are doing you know independent projects really get more involved? I know you know we can sign up for the newsletter. I know that we can get involved in the project using some of the tools. But is there a way to do more collaboration, especially around support um, around funding for projects and things like that? Yeah, the funding part is interesting. Um, I would say the main ways that folks like the way that we try to take on these projects really is in a collaborative sense. So we usually will work with an organization that has a data need or has like a data story in place. So you'll see, and they can be inside, they can be big or small, it doesn't matter. But if you're an organization that's working on, working with data that pertains to economic opportunity, we would bring you into the table. We would either bring our own technical expertise or contract some Tableau technical ex expertise to help you build your dashboard essentially, or the vision that you have for your dashboard. And then we work with at folks like Alan and the ambassadors at Tableau, folks who help kind of flush out the story, folks who um, make sure that whatever we do create in terms of the dashboard is up to a certain standard and protects these, these uh, communities we're trying to impact. And then from there, like I said, we also bring in um, folks on my data hub team who help kind of tell the story through the right lens and bring the right people into the conversation, whether they're folks with lived experience, whether they're folks who, um, are collaborators in terms of the, the expertise on the issue and then that's kind of like the duration of how those projects will go so i would say at this point the funding can be kind of weird because we it has to go through the foundation which is just a longer process but in terms of coming to us with a data idea a data story a data source an idea for a dashboard that'll impact your stakeholder group and then potentially scale out to other organizations or like-minded folks then that's where we can really bring the superpower of the data visualization into the conversation. Okay, great, thank you. And um, I'll ask one more question. Um, in reference to you know Tableau and being in the space around equity and justice, what would you say um, organizationally are some belief systems that you have to dismantle organizationally in order to really embrace this space and, and have sustainability and commit to sustainability and longevity? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and it's interesting because I think that's a question that all corporations should ask themselves and should probably like look back and assess essentially. I think for Tableau, it was it was interesting because when we look back to last, it seems like so long ago now, but when we look back to last summer um, or two summers ago and you saw all these kind of statements and commitments immediately come out from these tech companies and big organizations and corporations and it's like it's good and it was it's, it's good that things were being said and it's good that like the solidarity was being put in place but the worry and and the thing that we're not just now continually following following back up on is like how much of those commitments are actually going to the right places that these organizations said they were going to how much of this of these dollars are actually getting down into the community how much of x y or z is actually providing that impact and I think there's been plenty of analysis showing like there hasn't been a lot of that actual like, you know, following up to the commitment at all. There hasn't been um, all there hasn't been as much support as all these organizations said they were going to go with, which is troubling and which is not surprising, but it's, it's, it's increasingly troubling. And so when from the foundation standpoint, I remember when last summer, two summers ago happened and you had all these other tech companies rushing out to make a statement. You had a bunch of people coming in and making commitments. And we took time before anything was said, which was both nerve wracking um, and kind of frustrating from my standpoint, because you had in employees and people outside of the foundation who kind of were saying, like, what, what are you guys going to do? What's going on? What's what's next? And at the time, it was like, you're right. Like, I was starting to get frustrated and I was I was like, we need to put a plan together. But taking that time and making sure that we had this idea of what the initiative was going to be in place before coming out and saying we're going to throw x amount of software at something or x amount of funding at something um i think went a long way because when we did come out with the statement and then a month later or so when we did have this idea and structure for the racial justice initiative in place there was methods and and milestones that we had already laid out to make some of this some of these commitments that we went live with actually successful and that's why we've already given and 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 been well on track to surpass already almost 10 million dollars in investment so far through this initiative which is like a small piece of the puzzle of course but it's in terms of what we initially thought this initiative would be um we're already surpassing what the initial investment was and 
we at the Tableau Foundation, because we're such a data driven organization, um, we have our own kind of, they're called, uh, what are they called? They're called, it's called our living annual report essentially. And it's a dashboard where folks are able to see into all the commitments we make, all the partnerships we take on, the monetary investment, the software investment. And it's just like something that we want to make public and it's, a, it's on the foundation website. I should actually get a link for it, um, but yeah, I'll get a link for it um, before we have off. Um, but it's really just a way in which that people in the space of um, social impact and in the space of social justice can hold us accountable and see exactly how our, we're putting our like money where our mouth is essentially. And we're not getting everything perfect. We still have like a whole bunch of stuff to learn and we still, thank you Alan for sharing that. Um, we're, there's still gonna be adjustments to the initiative. There's still going to be things that change and um, like I said, I, I anticipate us increasing this investment um, as time goes on. But I think the things we had to get over internally was we didn't want to, we didn't need to try and be like everyone else in this tech space. We didn't need to try and do too much. We needed to, we needed to lean into our core competency and then figure out the ways in which that we could create impact through that. And then the other challenge was obviously getting like, you know, the people inside and outside of the organization on board with the vision that Neil and I had essentially. And that was just conversations and a continual push on what is important both to us personally, but also to how like companies like Tableau and Salesforce should be showing up in this space and the responsibility that we have to push these conversations forward.